Hi everyone. So it's the end of the year and I wanted to take a minute just to say thank you and talk about the amazing things that have happened this year. So that's what this video is all about today. Let's get started. So I just have to say thank you from literally the bottom of my heart to everyone who has watched my videos this year, everyone who has followed this entire journey. You know, I've been in this foster to adopt process for just over a year. There have been times, I'm not gonna lie, there have been times where I, I just wanna kinda stop all of this because it kinda gets demanding. But then I'll get like a video, uh, not a video, a, a message on Instagram or an email or whatever it may be from someone just, or comment on YouTube, someone just like saying thank you so much for telling your story. And I've had people say like, thank you for showing the side of foster care that not everyone really sees. I've cried on camera. <laughs> I've like shared the, you know, days I've gotten phone calls to pick up children and my anger when they didn't show up to my home. I've shared with you guys the time when I was going to stop fostering and go the route of IVF. I've been through a breakup <laughs> with you guys this year. And then I came back to foster care with you all. And someone said something really interesting to me the other, maybe like two, no, maybe three weeks ago. And I can't remember who it was. Oh, it was my best friend, Lauren. She had said to me, Kevin, you have to remember like you started foster care, shared that with the world, stopped, and then went to IVF and then came back to foster care. Don't forget how amazing it is that you were able to share your vulnerabilities throughout that process. And it got me thinking like, well, she's absolutely right because a lot of people, first off, a lot of people don't share the story of fostering. So the fact that I, that I went backwards in a way could have been something where I was really scared to share with people, but I opened myself up and decided to like share that. And the reason I ever continued documenting all of this is because that's the reality. This process is not easy. Parenting is not easy in the first place, but I just gotta say, parenting through the foster care experience is a whole nother level. It is a whole nother thing. And the amount of like energy, time, and heart that you put into this process and into these children, I'm telling you, at the back of your head, you always know, man, they could be gone like that. And there's times where I've had feelings of really amazing joy and optimism. And I have to hold on to those little moments, those little miracles, and just trust that, that, that that's real. And I've learned that you have to, you tend to have to um, over-exaggerate the small miracles along this process. But I thank you guys for just, for watching. I have watched the views skyrocket. I've watched the uh, subscribers skyrocket every video that I put out now be between 40 and a, we have between like 45 and 55 percent of my views are coming directly from YouTube which is an amazing thing I never I mean I know I always had a goal but like to watch it happen is just like wow and there there have been some amazing people like Kristen, she sent me some onesies for baby R, a mug about foster care. Um, other people have sent me 
like like this plush, like soothing bear that makes this like sound for kids, and he still uses it. Um, and and by all the most amazing things that have come out of this are the responses from people that have said things like, wow, thank you for sharing your experience with foster care. You are the reason I have decided to go this, this route to have a child. Wow, thank you for showing that LGBTQ people can make amazing, amazing parents. It is those comments, those direct messages that truly mean the world to me. There is someone that follows my channel. I see you, I see when you comment, I see you on Instagram. He's, I believe, under the age of 18 and wants to be a father so bad. And the fact that I have been able to do something that inspires another LGBTQ person who's a youth, man, that is like, it's like full circle because when I was a child, just like everyone, most people, they want to have children. But I think what happens to younger LGBTQ people is that we get so consumed with discovering our own sense of identity that the thought of marriage and the thought of having children kind of gets put on the back burner unconsciously because it, it becomes something that doesn't seem very possible to us. Um, but it's still there. It's still something we want. I really appreciate the fact that the people that watch these videos allow me to be myself, to be the gay Christian man that I am. It can be really, really scary to share that you are a gay Christian. Like, it can be really scary because there are times where you can feel like other LGBTQ people want to persec pers persecute you because of you being a faithful Christian. But what I will also say is, in the same respect to foster care, through my own sense of like, let me be vulnerable, let me be authentic, I've kind of used my platforms, while they're not the biggest platforms out there, I've used my platforms to in my own way advocate for foster care, my own way to advocate for messing up or making decisions that might not be the best for you, like moving to IVF. That just wasn't really what I wanted to do, but I was going through a breakup and I was really confused and going through a lot of things that I thought maybe that's what I wanted. And it turned out it wasn't, and that is okay. And I've been able to use this platform to let other LGBTQ people know that if you are a believer, if you want to be a believer, if you're scared to be a believer, that you can. There have been people on Instagram who have sent me DMs, who comment on my pictures and say, thank you for speaking up for who you are. I've always been the type of person who's sort of been a little bit different, outside the box, um, kind of like people don't really understand why I do what I do. And that really plagued me for a long, long, long time until I decided to say, sorry, I don't want to live a life where I'm making decisions and moves in my life for <laughs> everyone else. And that has, has hop happened a lot to me by no fault of my own. Like I've made those decisions and fostering to eventually adopt has been the thing for me that has taught me the most perspective about life and the most about what really, really matters in life. I used to like, there was a point in the process of everything when I got baby S. In the beginning, I was very much like, I have to get these videos out. I gotta do them, they gotta be perfect. And then baby S came and my God, my work, it was like an instant, there was an instant sense of, whoa, this is what 
life is about. There's a photo I'm gonna put on the screen. And when I was walking past that mirror and I saw myself and my dog jumped on my leg and I sent a text message to my friend Joe and I said, I finally figured out what life is about. We are not here to do anything other than be of service to others. It was a beautiful moment. And then baby L came and that was only a one week placement and I got to experience what two children were like at the time. And that was really hard. I could do it, but it was really hard. And then the IVF stuff. And then when I came back, I wanna share, I don't know if I share this, but I wanna share why I came back to foster care. So one day it was after my relationship and I'm not gonna lie, when I ended that relationship, I thought to myself, it was like a deep breath. Oh. And instantly, we took about two, two and a half weeks to just discuss this breakup. And instantly, before we were finished like the discussions, I was like, I can go back to foster care. I was holding myself back for that person. One day, my agency called me. I was getting in the shower, about to go to a Dodgers game. And I saw her name on the caller ID on my phone. I was like, why is she calling me? They know I don't want to do this anymore. But anyway, I picked up the phone. I said, hi. And she goes, hi, Kevin, how are you? I said, I'm doing well. What's going on? And she says to me, I have a child and you were the one person I thought of. And I know you said you want to stop, but I just wanted to know if you would be interested in taking him in. And she said, he's two days old. He is Nigerian and he's at the hospital and you would go to the hospital and pick him up. And I was just like, I don't know. And she said he was a drug exposed baby. And I said, okay, well, I need to think about this. So as I'm, I said, can you do me a favor? Call the social worker and find out what drug he was exposed to, because that is um, important to know as far as the mental and physical um, ramifications of that as throughout childhood. So she said, okay, I'll call you right back. And I knew I only had like three to five minutes before she was gonna call me again, and I had to make the decision. So I get in the shower, and in the shower, I drop to my knees and I say this, God, please let me know if I should take this child in. Please let me know if I should take this child in. And instantly, I swear to you, instantly, I heard yes, yes. Not just one yes, a yes to each of my questions. And I said, okay. When she calls me back, I'll say yes. So she calls me back, I answer the phone when I'm in the shower. And I said, okay, I'll take the child. She says, okay, great. Uh, I'll give you, I'll call you with the details. And I just remember thinking like, I was a little bit like, wow, I'm going through this again. And then she calls me back um, like 30 minutes later and she says, oh, Kevin, I'm sorry, but they're, they're having to keep the child for 10 days because of the exposure. And at that point I knew like, okay, that baby's not gonna come because 10 days in the foster care system could mean like anything can happen in, in a couple hours. So, but what that was really about for me, that was really about God asking me if I was ready for this journey again. That's what that was about. I believe God wanted me to ask the question, should I do this again? Or God wanted me to be open to it again and he wanted to see what I would do. And I think if I was open to the experience of foster care, that he was gonna give me what I was looking for. And then <laughs> I knew in my heart it was time to join, to start again. And that's when baby R showed up. And I had gotten contacted by someone and they said, there's this child, they're looking for a person that's in my area 
the baby is only two months old, yada, 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 explained everything to me. He could be in, he would be with you in two days. And I just said, okay, this is exciting. Um, and the experience that I experience with baby R and the connection that I feel and I felt instantaneously is like nothing I've ever felt before. Baby S taught me how to be a parent. Baby R has taught me how to be a father. Two very different things. Parenting someone or an animal is one thing. But being a father is shepherding someone through life. Being a father is putting yourself, yourself, not just yourself, but yourself, your core, your soul, behind that person and ensuring that they are supported and they are loved and that they feel that. There is a, it's so different. And then the love that I feel toward him. There's a gratitude that I believe that this child chose me to be with him in his life right now. There's difficult times, there's difficult things that I'm dealing with, revolving the, the system and just being a father in general. There are different things that I'm experiencing, but at the core, at the center of it all, is baby R. And I have to remember that, and everyone in his life is doing their best to remember that. And I think that that is the most beautiful thing of all. So, I just want to say, again, thank you all for, for following along. Truly, it's been a solid year where you all have like seen all the, ch the children come through here. You've seen my emotions, you've seen my tears, you've seen my joys, my happiness. And I am really excited about the future and what's, what's going on. You can never say for sure when it comes to all of this. But I am hopeful. I'm hopeful. With that, have a great new year. Be safe. Follow the laws with fireworks. <laughs> Get your vaccine if you haven't. Get your booster if you haven't. Stay safe. You are all so, 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 so loved. I wish there was another way I could show it to you. But onward from here. Onward from here. Peace out.